this video, you'll be watching an excerpt from our Civil 3D intro class. The topic I'll be covering is data shortcuts. But the next topic is data shortcuts. So hopefully you're familiar with X references. That was what I used to get this drawing in here. I used external reference. That allows me to see 2D line work from another drawing in my current file, right? Um, a data shortcut is similar, but it's for 3D objects. So this is covered on page 22 of the book. What is it? It's a path to a shareable civil 3D object in the current project, and it's stored as an XML file. Uh, why do we use it? To create data references, which bring shareable objects into other drawings. So if you've been working in civil for a little bit, you know that you typically have a team of people that need to get that project done. So in order to split up the project between multiple people, you'll have one person maybe working on the existing surface, one person working on the design surface, one person working on the corridor. Um, maybe it's working, works out that way. Maybe not, maybe you're doing everything, but <laughs> anyways, you wanna have that file or project split up into multiple files. So it's possible for multiple people to do the work. Um, another reason is the less, 3D data you have in each drawing, the smoother and faster it will run. And then if for some reason it crashes, you're not gonna lose the entire project. You lost maybe one step in that one piece, right? Um, so it's, it's good to split up your 3D objects into different files. So we'll get some practice with that today. How do we create these? In the prospector tab, oops, in the prospector tab of Toolspace, you can right click on data shortcuts. And then it takes three steps to set up the data shortcut. Um, down here, I have a little note in blue. This is not something you have to do all the time, but if you get a warning message that says your project needs to be associated to the current drawing, then basically you do what it says. So um, there's a right click option for this that I can point out. Here is another slide that I made. So that my, my coworker makes these chart ones and then I made this one. So it's three steps. And then after you create the data shortcut in a new drawing file, then you can reference your data shortcut. And so that will still be through tool space, data shortcuts, right click on the actual civil 3D object and then choose create reference. I created this slide because I wanted to give you an example of what folders we're going to be using. Let me put this on the side and then I'll explain the folder structure. Right. So this file is where my surface was created. So this is the original file. I want to be able to share this surface with other drawings. So in Toolspace on the Prospector tab, you're gonna scroll down and you should see data shortcuts. So the three steps are gonna happen right here at data shortcuts, you right click. The first step is set the working folder. The second step is if it's a brand new project, it would be a new data shortcut project folder. If it's a project you've been working on, you would just set the data shortcut project folder. So it just depends, is it new or not? And then the third step, create the data shortcut, all right? So those are all in here. Before we actually do it, let me show you our file structure. Every company has their files set up a little bit different, but hopefully you'll understand from our example. So the files that we're working on are in here, base, existing topo, everything else we're gonna put in this folder. So this folder is considered our project folder. So if you look at my PowerPoint, um, step number two, set or new project folder, in parentheses, I said project example is our project folder, right? So that's that. Then one folder above that is considered the working folder. So back to the PowerPoint, number one, the working folder is the civil 3D intro folder. Okay, so again, every company has it a little bit different. 
Some companies create a folder called working folder. And then inside of that, they have the project name or the project number, right? So it just depends where your company wants to put these shortcuts. So inside of my project example folder, there is this folder called shortcuts. This folder is automatically going to show up after you do step one and two. Inside of that folder, oh, mine is empty. <laughs> Let me just delete it. So it will show up after I do step one and two. Inside of that folder, we'll have different Civil 3D categories. And then inside of those categories, we'll have our actual shortcuts, which are XML files. So I'll come back and show you that. The main thing I want you to know is your project folder is one folder after the working folder. Or you could say the working folder is one folder above the project folder. Right. So it has that has to have that relationship, one up, one down. Okay. So in here, let's do step number one. We're going to right click on data shortcuts and we're going to set the working folder. So for us on the desktop, we want to select C3D intro and then you can click select folder. Admasters offers online and classroom training for a variety of Autodesk software. For more information, go to www.cadmasters.com or give us a call at 925-939-1378. Next, step number two. We're going to right click on data shortcuts and we're going to make a new data shortcut project folder. The name, if I put a brand new name here, it's going to create a brand new folder, but I want it to find the project example folder. So I just have to type project example, making sure I don't have any typos. Project space example. So if this name matches a folder that exists, it will find that folder. Click OK. So after step number one and number two, the data shortcut should have a path right next to it. And this path will remain the same unless you manually change it. So if I'm working on the exact same project every single day, I'm not too worried about this path. But if I have multiple projects going on, I always want to double check this is the correct project name, project folder, and that's the correct working folder. Okay, so for class, it should not, not change. It should always be the same. So I did step one and two. Step number three is to create the actual shortcut. So I'm going to right click on data shortcut and I'm going to create the data shortcut. So any civil 3D objects that you created in this drawing will show up in this list. We only have one. We're going to check mark the civil 3D object that we want to shortcut. It's the eTopo surface. And then we'll click OK. All right, so now, just to double check that it worked, under data shortcuts, under surfaces, here is my eTopo that I just referenced. What that means is any drawing that has this path set will be able to see that surface. And from here, I'll be able to reference it into other files. Um, that surface symbol is in front. And then the square with an arrow, that's a data shortcut symbol. All right, so make sure this is saved. We're about to start a brand new drawing. And we'll bring the eTopo into that brand new drawing. All right, I can close existing topo. And then I'm going to create a new drawing using the same template as yesterday, Autodesk Civil 3D Imperial NCS. So my new drawings open. The next topic after we finish data shortcuts is going to be alignment. So we're going to save the drawing and call it alignment. Once your drawing is saved, step one, two, three is already done. We are now in the reference drawing. 
In the reference drawing, we're going to go to tool space, data shortcuts, right click on eTopo and create reference. So over here, don't notice the path is already set up. We just look under that data shortcut surface eTopo shows up right there. You can right click on eTopo and create reference. Okay, so here we get a window that allows us to change the name, change the style, but we're not going to change anything. We're going to keep those and click OK. okay. If nothing shows up in model space, zoom extents, and then you should see that surface. So one difference between X references and data shortcuts is that not the entire drawing comes into the next file, only the specific civil 3D object comes over, right? So all the contour lines, boundary lines, that stuff stays behind. Only the surface that we selected comes through. Once it comes through, it is a 3D surface. I can take a look at it in Object Viewer, still 3D. I can change the style of this object. So I want you to select that surface, right click, go to surface properties. On the information tab, it's currently using the two and 10 background style. Let's switch it to border only. So data references are still 3D objects. You can play with the styles, you can see them in 3D. They have all the data of the original file. Um, you can even add labels to those surfaces. So for example, I can do spot elevation and it works just like in the original file. The thing that is different from the original file is if I go to the top of tool space here, still prospector tab, under surface, I will see eTopo, but it's going to have that data shortcut symbol, the square with the arrow in it. Under eTopo, there is no definition. So the definition lives in the original file. It does not live here. If I wanted to edit this surface, I need to go back to the original file. So a way to do that is, let's see, we have to do it from down below. Down here, you can right click on eTopo and open source drawing. So this is a quick way to open the original file. If for some reason you don't want this to be linked to the original, you just want it to be a copy, you can promote this object. So again, that will break the link between this file and the original and it's just gonna be a copy of that surface. If you don't want it here anymore, there's an option to remove it. Um, what else? Oops. So it still has properties, it still has style. If there was a change made to the original, you can synchronize the surface so that yours will update to match the original changes. Yeah, so. Those are the main things to know about. AdMasters offers online and classroom training for a variety of Autodesk software. For more information, go to www.cadmasters.com or give us a call at 925-939-1378.